Hey folks, it's Swank Ivy with another Letters to an Asexual. This is number 72, and I'm outside at my lovely patio table. Hopefully there won't be any interruptions with noises or random weird bugs. So, um, I actually have a pretty short one for you today. Uh, so, I guess I'll get right into it and then see if I have anything to add. Um, so this was a message that a fella decided to send me on OkCupid a couple of years ago, and this is his introduction. He had never spoken to me before or anything, but this is how he chose to present himself to me. He says, Frankly, the profile is a confusing tome and is seemingly replete with contradictory positions. The one positive thing that I did appreciate was the adherence to grammar and spelling. I did take note that you have quite a definitive and firm attitude towards others that is not conducive to really personal exchanges. I'm not delving into the psychosocial aspects, but that attitude and expectation of my response is a pretty significant warning that guarded exchanges would be the norm. I have run into all sorts of people in my careers, but honestly, never one with the traits you so proudly display. While I'm always open to new friends, I'm not the submissive weenie who enjoys being told what friendship has to be. What is even more amazing is that you must have a very, very low opinion of men in general. To assume that any man who actually thinks would be interested in you, particularly in a sexual way. Keep writing your books and believing that your thought of life as ever tighter concentric circles will lead anywhere. I wish you luck, but harbor no ill feelings towards you. You just go ahead and react if you feel the need to do so, but I honestly really don't care. Just so you know, I sent him a message and then I blocked him because that's how I roll, I guess. This is what I sent him in response. Baby, you should probably just send messages to people who want what you want and leave the rest of us alone. Sending someone a message about how uninterested you are in them is very peculiar and boring. Though I did get a giggle out of the bit where you said I'm delusional for believing I would interest someone sexually, considering the absolutely unthinkable number of sex offers I've received, yes, some of them from people who theoretically had brains, I find it a little baffling that you believe you know what my experience is likely to be. It doesn't sound convincing when you say it with authority, though. It just sounds confused and a little pathetic. Like it's really important to you to knock me off a pedestal you believe I'm unworthy of. When I didn't put myself on one in the first place, like you didn't send this message to offer help to a person you perceive to be troubled, or to offer perspective she might need, or even to search for insight for your own curiosity. You sent it to tell me I'm a failure, unsexy, probably mentally ill, and unworthy of your respect. That's, I don't know, just mean. <laughs> You might want to think about why you felt the need to say something like this to another person. My life is not going in any kind of circles, and I have already succeeded at many of the goals you appear to think I you appear to think haven't led anywhere. Talking to me like I'm in a rut and I'm unhappy or confused is showing how little knowledge you have of my life, not proving anything to me about your insight. Snots like you who pretend to have observed something profound about my experience are kind of a dime a dozen though, and I don't imagine there's anything you could possibly have to say after this that would be worth my attention, so I'll be blocking further messages from you at this point. If you try to respond, I won't know. Okay, so interestingly enough, this does not even mention asexuality, um, but of course he was responding to my assertion that I don't want to be approached a certain way and, you know, a, a description of what people can expect from me in terms of mutual attraction, which, you know, romantically and sexually that would be none, um, that I'm there for friendship and that I expect people who want to be friends with me to talk to me in certain ways which default to respect, and that is apparently really offensive to some people. So where this guy came from is a place where he saw that and he saw me being egotistical because I feel like I'm entitled to have some control over how people speak to me. Now, I'll agree that 
you know, you don't want to preemptively define this is how I want our relationship to be. I mean, that's basically the main thing that I uh, object to on OkCupid is that people are going through other people's profiles saying, okay, I want a girlfriend and I want her to be this, I want her to fit into these descriptions, these categories, and you know, you're turning the pages trying to find a person, a real whole three-dimensional person to put them in that slot. And it's not unreasonable to think like, hey, a lot of people have this void in their life, we're all kind of looking for love, let's do this thing. But I think that because I'm there to use the matching system for friendships, like you're allowed to do, uh, you know, I needed to be very specific about what I'm actually going to appreciate in terms of first contact. And, you know, I'm sure that some of the ways that I speak about my desires for contact are a little off-putting to certain kinds of people, but in general, most of them are very entitled. They're walking into a conversation with me thinking, uh, I'm going to proposition this person for a particular kind of orient uh, uh, of a relationship orientation, and seeing something that's so starkly opposed to that and acting like I've got a right to it or something uh, really puts some of these people off their game, I guess. Um, so someone like this guy really needed me to know, uh, I guess, how useless I was to him and wanted to put me down, wanted to knock me off that pedestal. And um, I can't remember ever contacting someone to tell them that I wasn't interested in their work or them. I don't remember ever reaching out to someone and saying, excuse me, I'd like to tell you that your work is meaningless to me or your existence is something that I don't care about. Uh, no, I really can't think of any time that I've ever done that. Uh, I've never gone to someone's YouTube channel and told them that I think their video shouldn't have been made. I've never gone to someone's essay and said, yeah, um, nobody cares about this topic. Clearly, if someone, even one person who wanted to write about something or make a video about something, it, you know, that's, that's enough. Even if nobody ever watches it or reads it, that was enough justification for writing it. Um, and I, I wonder about the psychology of people who feel compelled to contact somebody who is supposedly so irrelevant to them and say, like, I need you to know that I don't care, that I, that I don't like your approach or that I, I disapprove of your way of making friends because it disincludes me, I guess. Um, I don't know. Um, I think on a certain level, somebody like that guy must have been approaching his journey through looking through the profiles uh, with this basic understanding of what he was likely to find and he was literally offended when he came across one that made it clear that we wouldn't be a good match and he just he really wanted me to feel like I shouldn't be allowed to do that or that there was something wrong with me for wanting those things. Um, and what a lot of those people do when they think they sound very smart is try to describe your life in a way that they think is going to upset you like, oh, I'm being told I'm a failure, I'm being told, you know, just, uh, I've made other videos before where you see people trying to do that to me, they're like, they know I'm lonely or they know I spend all this time crying into my pillow, I'm like, uh -huh, yeah, okay. Um, since I know that I don't do those things, I am not insecure about those things, so it's kind of like I turn right around and I'm, I'm laughing at the idea that someone is stooping so low as to use what they think is going to be hurtful against me, but when you really come down to it, you think about the kind of person who wants somebody else to be hurt, who comes into your life just, just to hurt you. And I try to be optimistic and I try to, I try to feel like people don't exist that are like that, that are just out there trying to hurt other people. There must be something where they feel like you've hurt them first. And that's kind of the category that I put this person in, where he felt like 
everything that I stood for was an attack on who he is and making him feel irrelevant or making him feel like um, I was insulting his gender or something. So, uh, of course, the funniest aspect of that was him trying to say that how baffled he was at the idea that I actually think men would approach me that way. Like, but they literally do, and they will probably continue to do that until I die. I mean, it's not even about attractiveness sometimes. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just the way that society is. And I am, I am very amused and a little bit uh, shocked at the idea that a man would actually try to take that angle to tell a woman, like, how could you ever think a guy would want you? I mean, I guess they really are just that divorced from the reality of being a woman because, I mean, it isn't hard to get men's attention when you're, when you're a woman. Like, in, I, I know that that, I mean, that kind of sounds a little bit bad, so let me, let me clarify. Like, there are people who have more trouble actually finding, um, suitable, tolerable mates for themselves. If they, you know, if they're less normatively attractive, obviously they're not going to get as many offers. That is a thing. And it sometimes makes a lot of women feel really bad when, you know, women who do get a lot of offers will be like, this is the experience of all women. I know that that is not the case, especially if you are not normatively attractive or there's some trait about you that people always zero in on to, to say that they're, uh, they think that that makes you an unacceptable mate. But um, ultimately, uh, we do live in a society that men play the pursuers and women play the pursued. So we're not really the we're not really the ones who uh, that it, that's on us to pursue for the most part. Like you can you can be a very passive woman and still get still get offers doing pretty much nothing and in the case of people like me some of us take great pains to tell people that they don't want what is offered um, and I guess like since there are so many people out there who expect a woman's self-worth to be related to her ability to attract mates, he didn't know anything else to do but still use that angle to insult me. I think that's where I was going with this roundabout um, analysis of what he said. Um, even though not being able to get anybody in my bed is, some, is completely irrelevant to me if it was true, um, he still felt like that was an easy answer. Like, let me just tell this girl how undesirable she is. And that's, like, that, that's still gonna insult me even though I'm doing everything I can to make it clear that I don't want that attention. So, anyway, I guess that's enough rambling about uh, that topic. Um, before it gets dark out here, I'm going to go ahead and end this video, and I'll see y'all next time.